Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for organising this. And I was kind of thinking, what, what, I don't know what to say to you. Oh, you know, probably know as much, if not more, than I do about what's going on. Uh, so, so I think about what it was that, that makes us a community and makes it important. And also, just from that, what a great, what a great gig. <laughs> so I was, I was kind of thinking, the, the, the first time I went to the West Bank, I'm, I'm sure there's lots and lots of people who've been. The first time I went there, I was completely unprepared. Somebody said to me, what's it like? When I got back, and I said, it's far better and worse than you can ever imagine. Uh, I remember sleeping in a small hotel in East Jerusalem and working with uh, an Israeli fixer who was going to help me find people. And she just sent me a text that woke me up and it said, there's a taxi downstairs, go downstairs and get inside it. So I go downstairs, it's my first time. I get inside, there's a guy called Adet. And he said, I'm taking you somewhere. And we start heading off. I said, you know where we're going? He said, there's a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, but what, what, what exactly are we going to do? He said, it's been arranged, don't worry. So we get out and we're driving up towards the wall um, and it's near Bethlehem and we're driving on a massive, great, huge, cantilevered thing that hangs over. And as we're driving along, we get flashed by a car, which is a jeep behind us. And the, so the lights are flashing and I said, we're getting flashed. And he said, I know. I said, well, well, well is it, does that mean we have to get it? No, no, no. I said, is there a threat behind you? No, no, no. This is the person who is going to meet you. So <laughs> we pull over by the side of the wall. I get out, we get shuttled into another car. I just said, who are you? And he said, I'm an Israeli lawyer. I'm going to show you something. So he drives me off to the settlements and starts showing me settlements and saying, this is a legal settlement and this is an illegal settlement. And I said, I thought they were all illegal. He said, no, this is under Israeli law. This one is legal, this one's illegal. The illegal one, you'll know, has got all the support of the army, it's got the, you know, all the telecommunications, it's got all the roads in there, but it's illegal and maybe they get around to getting rid of it, but more than likely it will be an established settlement. So he shows me that. And then I said, what do we do? He said, well, I'm going to take you to town. So he takes me into town. I said, where am I going now? He said, I'm, I'm dropping you at Bethlehem. And, you know, as you know, the, the Israeli human rights group. So we sit there and I have an hour of slides of horror. And, and, and come out of that, and, and somebody else is waiting for me outside, and I get taken into town, into East Jerusalem, to meet uh, a man called Ray Dolphin, who many of you know. And Ray works at, at the UN, and he is quite outstanding in his documentation of what is actually going on. And if you want a blow-by-blow, -blow, methodical, accurate, peer-reviewed piece of work that will blow apart any statistical argument, he's the man to go for. And he said, I'm going to take you for dinner. You've had quite a, a, a day. And I said, yeah, thank God, I'd like that. And he said, first of all, we have to go down to Sheikh Jarrah. And we go down to Sheikh Jarrah, and that's where Palestinian homes are being evicted by Israeli settlers in East Jerusalem. And we get led down there, it's a Palestinian area, and then there are the, the Star of David, the flags, the Israeli flag bedecks this house. And I meet the Palestinian family on the street, and I said, well, what, 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 what's the story? And they said, well, we've been thrown out of our house. I said, well, did the police do anything? I said, yes. I said, what did they do? They said, they came and arrested us for putting up an illegal tent. And I was like, fuck. So I was quite, this is your first day. I was quite kind of like, oh my God. And the, he's very kind, this guy, Ray Dolphin, very kind, and leads me into this restaurant, he does this nice little NGO, human rights, UN kind of restaurant in place. And we sit down and I thought, okay, this, is gonna, this has been a day. And Cherie Blair walks in. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like the time I'm sort of like blabbering about war criminals while he tries to order pasta and come down. And this was the day one. This was day one. And it's the, and, and I don't know anyone who has visited the West Bank who has not come away like a dog with a bone. Because the injustice grips you. And it takes hold of you. And it is utter and complete. I remember talking to an Israeli lawyer in, in um, it was it's in the Bedouin village next to a settlement. And because the wall goes round the settlement, it captures the Bedouin villages and places it on the Israeli side. And as you know, you sit there and go, this is just nuts. This is just absolute insanity. You know, the settlement. He's absolutely gorgeous. I was talking to the guy who runs the settlement. I was talking to him there. I said, do you get many people? He said, yes. I said, what brings them to the settlement? He said, we've got very good schools. 
This is incredible. People are taking over territory for school places. This is nuts. This put what's happening in Islington completely from the show. <laughs> um, and it looks like some weird Tuscan hill fort with Bougainvillea overflowing from the gardens and beautiful terraced places and sculpted homes. And it, it, I remember walking along the street where all the, gar the, the garages that were open, the garage doors were open. You walk past them, you walk past the clutter of suburbia, all the kind of freezers and the, you know, the lawn bars and the sports equipment and the boots and all this kind of stuff like something out of Steven Spielberg movie. And then you go into the Bedouin village. And in the Bedouin village, they are not under the rule of law that the people in the settlement are under. They don't have a trial, they don't have a defense and prosecutors, they don't have a presentation of evidence if they've done something wrong. They don't have a jury, they don't have a right of appeal. They don't have any, uh, in fact, they're not even allowed to have a road in their settlement. They're not allowed to build a road, they're not allowed to have electricity. They can have electricity made on a small generator, but they certainly can't have oil. The water is controlled by the settlement. They, they, they live in tin shacks, they're not allowed to build in the settlement. And I remember just being just absolutely furious and talking to the Israeli lawyer. And I said to him, I, 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 look, I don't want to describe this as apartheid. And he went, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, <laughs> this is apartheid. And I think it's very odd because when you're there, you, you, you experience this thing and, and the stuff burns into you. The injustice burns into you. And it's... I find it impossible to be a human being actually encounter that and not walk away with this feeling that we have to do something. But life intervenes. Uh, you know, and you know, obviously I've got a charisma. So, <laughs> you know, life intervenes and you have things to do and there's shopping to get, birthdays to celebrate and all that kind of stuff. And this is the importance of, the, of this. This is the importance of this. It's each one of us, I, I resolutely feel that each one of us is part of a community, we're part of the building blocks of the community, and actually we need to be together. And this is the importance of these events, it's the importance of the pledge is that we come together and be our community. That the times that we feel that we stray from, forget that injustice and forget those burning feelings of passion that we had. Actually, the importance of coming together is that we remember and that we stop that struggle, forget, we, we fight that struggle, forget it, and that we come together as communities to remind ourselves of the strength which we have and the power which we have in working together, and we have to have this. And so, thank you. Thank you for organising this. Thank you for organising the pledge. It's an incredibly important thing. Um, as people, you know, we're artists for fuck's sake. We're supposed to communicate, we're supposed to be good at it. So our job is to be the ambassadors for change, and thank you very much for keeping us on the straight and narrow, for reminding us, and for inspiring us to do that.